So we enter now into a service of celebration. And we've put that together in a way that we're able to celebrate the ministries that we have here at the church. And I think uh, as Kim and I and others were, were discerning this, the thought came to mind that one of the greatest ways of celebrating a person's ministry uh, is by celebrating the ministries that have grown and thrived under their leadership. As pastors, when we go into a church, it's not about us. It really is about what we've offered and what we've left behind, the legacy that we've established and created, the leaders that we've helped to build up uh, and encourage in their ministry. Um, so one of the ways we wanted to be able to celebrate Pastor Trish this morning is to show her what is going on and what is alive and well in the life of Epworth United Methodist Church as a result of what she's offered to us. When Pastor Trish came on board, we were in a time in which we needed healing and we needed to be loved on. And one of the things that she did really well was love us a lot. Um, and encourage us and help us to heal and help us to uh, become whole as a congregation. And I think you'll see as we go through this celebration that we are alive, we are well, and we are whole. And uh, so sit back, relax. There will be a slideshow. We'll be lifting up different ministries in the church and celebrating all that is taking place here. So... The first ministries we would like to celebrate is our administrative team. Um, this includes the board of trustees who make sure that, you know, the light bulbs get changed and the outside looks beautiful and is taken care of. The second committee would be our staff parish, pastor parish relations committee. Um, this is the committee that will uh, hire the new administrative assistant, work with Kate getting her acclimated to the new church, and kind of oversees the staff of the church. The third committee is the administrative resource team. This is the governing body of the church. They kind of make sure we're all kind of following the rules and um, report on what each committee reports to them what's going on. Uh, our finance committee, this is the group that makes sure the lights are turned on, that the bills are paid and that the uh, deposits get made and oversee the general finances of the church. And the final committee is our nominations committee. And this is the committee that puts all these people on these different committees. Anyone who has uh, participated on these committees, if you would please stand, we would like to give you a round of applause for all the hard work you do behind the scenes. So one of the things that all those administrative uh, groups remind us of often is that in addition to volunteers, they need money. So <laughs> one, of the, uh, one of the ways that we celebrate our faith and uh, share our joy with, with Christ and all that Christ is doing in the midst of our church is through our tithes and our offerings. Um, one tradition we have here at the church is we do not pass the plate down the aisles, we keep them in the back of the church. So there's one center aisle, there's one on either aisle. Uh, one of the ways, once again, that we give back for all that God has given us is we share our offerings to the Lord. That goes not just to care for our church, uh, but for many in our country and around the world through the tithes and offerings that we offer here at the church. So please, before you leave, uh, consider offering to the church, but more importantly, to the Lord. Let us pray for those. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the many gifts that you offer to us. We give you thanks for the blessings that you pour out over us. And one of the ways that we give thanks for those is by giving back to the work of your hands, the work of your church. Um, Lord, we know that anything that we can offer it can be multiplied by you and used for amazing blessing in the life of a church. It's not just about paying bills. It's not about 
club dues or anything like that. It's truly giving to you so that you may bless, multiply, and do amazing things in the lives of others as a result of that offering. Uh, so, Lord, we lift those up to you. We ask your blessing upon them, and we ask that you use them for your good will. Amen. All right. One of the other ways that we want to areas that we want to celebrate is worship. And uh, you may think everything's taking place up here. It is not. We have an incredible media ministry. The people in the back of the room where you hear their voices or see their hands raising up above the, the wood or whatever, uh, that team helps to make everything run and go together with the PowerPoints and the sound and the lighting and uh, putting up with our last-minute changes in the morning to say, oh, can we insert that slide? Or, I found this video last night, can you make that work? And they do magic to help bend over backwards to help us do wonderful things in uh, the worship of our church. Our ushers, led by our great uh, ninja usher, is that what we're calling him? Uh, Steve, uh, Steve Lindell, who always keeps us straight. <laughs> Um, and I tell you what, he wrangles us pretty well, right, Trish? <laughs> and makes sure that uh, we're on task and doing our thing, but he helps us and supports us and undergirds us in great ways, but he trains other people to be ushers to help guide us through worship and make everything go well, so we give thanks for him. We also have our altar hoppers that do an amazing jo job, often unseen, uh, by preparing the, the table and everything else for us for uh, communion by putting up the banners and the pyramids to make the, the church beautiful, uh, making sure that we have flowers and other decorations for different times of the season to bring us into all that, that worship is. And I'm not going in order with that, so just enjoy the slideshow while I talk. Um, <laughs> so thank you, Walter Hoppers, for the liturgists, uh, the people that volunteer to get up and speak. Uh, for the children that are now doing that as well, it is such a great thing to see them come up and share the word of the Lord with us and help guide us in worship. We give thanks because it's not always an easy thing. How many of you don't like getting up in front of people and talking? So thank God for those that do. So it's a, it's a really good thing and we give thanks for them. Uh, for the volunteers for the children's message. Uh, the people that want to get up and share Christ with our kids and let them know that they matter and they matter to Christ and giving them uh, lessons and messages that help them grow in their faith. For our greeters who, with a handshake and a smile, make people feel welcome and know that they belong here at the church, we give thanks uh, for those greeters. And uh, once again, for the sound and light crew, as I was mentioning before, that make everything come together and, and look good uh, for the worship, but all to the glory of God to make all that work. And I think one thing we try to do is make sure we're very encompassing of any, everyone. Uh, if we've missed anyone, um, but you're involved in worship, in the life of worship here at the church, uh, we include you and we celebrate you as well. But if you have been a part of any of these ministries that help with the worship of our church, would you please stand so we can recognize you? Thank you. We have a whole lot of people that are participating in the music ministry of this church. And, and um, so I'll just sort of go down the list. Um, the choir, as you see here, and also we have our wandering troubadour who's just back from Italy, Pat Patrick, who's still on Venice time, he told me this morning. Um, so we meet every week, Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. Just jot that down on your schedule in case you have an opening and you want to come and join us, because we're happy to have you. Um, they rehearse every week, sing every week, 
this will be their last Sunday for the summer, but they'll be back in September and start again. Um, our, the next group that also practices every week is the Ubi Sumus Ringers. Now that's a very dignified name, and we're a very dignified group. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, uh, I'll just give you a little translation of the name Ubi Sumus. What it really means is, where are we? So that's, that's where the name came from. Um, the handbell, this is the handbell group. They meet downstairs in the handbell room every Wednesday at 6 o'clock. So again, that's a group that's looking anybody that might want to join that. So just show up in September, 6 o'clock, and we'll put you to work. Um, another group that sings periodically through the year is Kids Sing. They will, and it's our little group of kids, they, they come down here at 9 o'clock in the morning on Sunday mornings, and we rehearse our songs, and then at various times during the year, they sing. That's open basically from birth to fifth or sixth grade, I guess. And um, this basically the same group has started to another uh, ministry called Kid Ring. We've got a little set of colored bells, and if you ever see red, and if you have an E, you're yellow, and so they play their bells and they play their songs. So far, they've had one performance, but they'll be back in the fall also. So that group also um, is very active. And the next group is the men's chorus, men's choir. This is basically any of the men at the church. Once a month, we, get, we just sort of gather around the piano. We sing our song, or we practice our song once or twice, and then off we go. We have lots of men that come up and do that. I would be thrilled if we can get everybody. We have some that we have to sort of drag a little bit, but that's all right. We'll get them up there any way we can. Um, I, but it's a great group. If you've ever heard the men sing, they are just wonderful. I, it's one of my very fair, favorite groups. And then the last group that I don't want to forget is a group you'll see throughout the summer. These are our special music people. These are people who have volunteered or sort of been coaxed to, to play or sing or do something to fill the music slot during the summer or, or sometimes throughout the year. This can, we've got instrumentalists, we've got singers, we've got people that come in and play percussion for us sometimes. It's just all sorts of people. So um, any time that you feel the urge to do something for one of those slots, we can, we can make it work. So we should have a whole lot of people stand up when all of these folks stand up. Please give them a round of applause because they are just wonderful. So music folks. In the spirit of music, we're going to have a little hymn sing. So in place of one of our hymns, we're going to do, uh, we're going to let you pick a hymn that you want to sing. Pick a favorite hymn. Um, try not to get it too weird that we can't play, but other than that, it's all right. So we're just going to do one verse of several hymns. And Trish, you get to pick the first one. I'm looking for a number. I don't know the number.
in the garden, remember?
That was awesome. You guys all picked great hymns. Great time. Now we're going to celebrate education and ministries. Um, we're going to celebrate. We have Sunday school for children, youth, and adults. Um, we also have children's church, which is during our worship time downstairs. We have amped and confirmation. Um, we also have Bible studies. We have a young adult studies. We have the men's ministry, and we also have vacation Bible school. Um, so there are a lot of education opportunities and other ministries for us all to get involved in. I'm going to ask why the slides are showing that if all the kids that are part of the song with Judy, if they'll come up front. Part of the group that Judy is having them sing. So all the children who were downstairs who sung the song. Sorry, I wasn't real clear on that. I don't know if I was real clear on it. Thank you. That was awesome. I would have to say if I was doing that, though, you'd have to pick me up off the floor. <laughs> um, so anyone who is a part of these fabulous ministries, if you would please stand, I would appreciate it. Awesome. So another area that uh, we chose to celebrate was fellowship. Uh, one thing that the church does very well uh, to bring us all together, to help build community and build family uh, with all of us. Some of the different groups uh, that help us to build fellowship are um, book club and coffee hour after services downstairs. Uh, the E3s, and if you don't know what that stands for, I, one time we had ministries all across the board, and some people got together and said, we need one for everybody else. So it became Epworth Everybody Elsers, so hence E3s. So the E3s, um, 
Shrove Tuesday pancake supper, um, Christmas dinner, and then also the seniors ministry of the church. And I feel like there's others too, like I think, yeah, but I'll, I'll leave it at that. There's many different ways that we gather people together uh, for fellowship through the different ministries. And as you can see from the pictures, the snow day, that was awesome. That was really cool. You have the colored snow. Tubing trip. If you've never done the tubing trip, your butt gets numb, but you have a great time. It's really good. After about five minutes, you feel nothing. It's a good thing. All right. Excellent. And for those that are involved in helping us to build the fellowship of the church, please rise so we can recognize you. ministries we want to celebrate is uh, service, missions, and community outreach. Um, they're separate in your bulletin. I'm going to put them together. Um, part of the service is our missions team, um, which sends money to missionaries down in other countries. Um, we support uh, missionary people who from our own church, actually, so we're very excited by that. Um, lots of different other mis mi mission opportunities. Um, we also celebrate our mission team, who we're very thankful is working here this year. Um, we also celebrate Baltimore County Christian Work Camp and all the fabulous work they do around the county. Our knitters, that's a little group that ma many people know about, but they too, they make hats and they donate them to the hospitals for newborn babies. The Bazaar, which helps raise money for um, the church and just as an outreach mission um, for the community. Our Thrifty Penny and all those who work behind the scenes to make it fabulous and um, donate back to the community. We also have our community outreach, which includes programs like scouting, um, includes our 12-step programs, which I'm not sure many people realize we have several different 12-step programs in here in our church. <laughs> and then we have our Epworth Children's Center, which is, um, includes infants to pre-K, and they have about 30 kids enrolled right now. Um, there was a great need in the community for uh, child care, and we stepped up and provided. So these are awesome mission and community outreach programs that we'd like to celebrate. Apparently, we're a very active church here. So anyone who is involved with those ministries, if you would please stand, we would like to congratulate you and celebrate you. One area that we also want to celebrate very much are the unsung heroes. Uh, these are the people that are working behind the scenes that aren't looking for a pat on the back uh, or even recognition, but just doing it out of the love of God and to make things happen around the church. Uh, we had volunteers step up to man the office over the past couple months uh, to make sure that we didn't have anything fall by the wayside there, and they just did that out of the goodness of their heart. We have volunteers that step up for various things all around the church just to do it. 
or people that show up on a day and say, you know what, um, I remember one day uh, a couple years ago, someone came in, bucket, scrub brush, and I know who it is, but if I mention them, they're not an unsung hero anymore. Um, so, but they didn't like the way the steps looked over there, so they spent a whole day just scrubbing down the steps and making it look cleaner uh, and everything else just because they wanted to. Um, we also have uh, this wonderful slideshow that was put together. Uh, Kim and I were putting the service together. We had an idea for a slideshow, but not necessarily the means to make it happen. And um, I want to, I know she'll be sung now, but Judy Sutter uh, stepped up and joyfully put together all the slides and found the slides to help uh, to bring that all together and make that happen. Uh, but, you know, Judy's among so many. There are many of you that do things just to help out in the life of the church, and you don't always get recognized or known uh, for doing that, but we want you to know that we see it, and we're thankful for it, and God knows that you're doing it, and it puts a smile on God's face. So for all the unsung heroes that show up with little goodies for the pastors, I've seen breakfast come in and T's show up on doorways and things like that just to make life a little bit better, you're making a difference, and you're making Epworth better, and we're thankful for you. So I'm going to say let's clap for the unsung heroes, because if you all stand up, then it's not really unsung anymore, right? So thank you. And the final area we want to celebrate is our staff, and for that I invite our SPRC chair. Mr. Steve Lindell, uh, to share that. They made me write a speech. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I do want to say um, I didn't become the SPRC chair until a few months ago when my good buddy Ed, I hope you're watching, left me, left town, so uh, thanks, Ed. Um, uh, before I get into thanking some of the folks here, I did want to um, cover a little bit of business. We, uh, as you know, several months ago, we lost our uh, admin assistant, so we've been searching for that person. After about 50 resumes and many interviews, some of them not so great, <laughs> um, <laughs> we did find a new administrative assistant. Her name is Christy Holly, and she'll be starting on Tuesday, June 7th. Um, Beth Waltrip is going to be helping her out um, in the beginning here, just kind of show her the ropes, let her know what needs to be done and everything. And I'm sure all of you want to tell her some things that she might need to do, but if you could do me a favor, if you feel like there's something that she needs to do, let me know about it. Don't We don't need 100 people going into the admin assistant saying, you need to do this, you need to do that, or whatever. She's going to be new. you got to give her a break. So just let me know if there's something you think, you know, she should be doing, and we'll, uh, we'll cover it with her. Um, now, on to our current staff. Um, Sylvia, over there, I want to thank you for the lovely music you play for us and the bright smile that you bring to us every Sunday. We appreciate that very much. Elaine, for your guidance to the bells, the choir, and your lovely singing as well. We thank you. And I should have my nursery staff, Susan and Allie. Thank you for letting me come over there and say hi to the babies every Sunday. During sermon, by the way. I'm still listening when I go, just so you know. Um, and we should have Sally, as you guys know. Our, uh, Sally just started in August, and she's been doing a bang-up job for us. And uh, truly appreciate working with her. Uh, we, we talk frequently or email frequently, so... Uh, she is doing a great job with the children. Um, and then, of course, as I think you mentioned earlier, Bill, we did have some office help. They should be up there. I want to say I truly appreciate everything that you've done. Um, and I don't know if Kim's pic picture is up there, but she did help with the bulletins. She doesn't want me to say it, but she did. Actually, she's been doing the bulletins, so <laughs> we truly appreciate that. And then there's this guy named Bill. Uh, yeah. Bill, <laughs> just want, want to ask you to continue your efforts with our youth and young adults. I know from past experience how you can guide our youth on the correct path, and we appreciate that. 
And before I get into Trish, I'd like to give these guys a round of applause, please. <laughs> Trish, <laughs> there are many things we can be thankful for to you, and, and I ask that individuals here make sure when you go downstairs afterwards that you go up to Trish and you uh, let her know how you've helped, how she's helped you or how she's touched your life. Um, you've been there for our good times, like the Bible studies you participate in, the baptisms and the weddings. Also in our tough times, like the 3 a.m. hospital visits, funerals, and grief counseling. You brought us grace, compassion, and comfort through all you've done for this Epworth family. You will be missed by us, but you will go to your next church family with new knowledge gained here at Epworth to move their hearts and lives as you have done for us. Good luck, and God bless you and your family as you begin your next journey. Thank you. And now for her last time here at Epworth, leading us in Holy Communion, I invite Pastor Trish to lead us in that time. You know, um, no good pastor ever takes up an opportunity to say a few words. So I just want to read uh, to you from Philippians chapter 1. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making my prayer with joy, thankful for your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I think it's um, always a good thing to be able to, um, to give thanks to one another for the many